In this lecture, we will learn about the understanding, the design concepts of bio implants. Uh, in, the, in the field of bio implants, if any student or a researcher is entering, they basically are worried about the applicability, applicability part of the uh, bio implant. So, that is the reason it becomes very essential to learn a few design concepts or to learn what are the parameters or what are the conditions which will decide the applications of bio implants once it is inserted into the body. So, the applications uh, are the very, very essential part of it because th that, that decides the overall usability of a particular device material. So, there are certain, uh, so synthetic biomaterials they basically go into uh, uh, applications such as dental applications, sutures for hernia repairs, they can also be utilized in vascular grafts or stents, drug delivery and non-adhesive soft, soft membranes. So, you can see a myriad uh, applicabilities of uh, synthetic biomaterials. Those are not natural biomaterials, but synthetic. So, that is the reason they have to basically undergo certain th certain selection criteria, such as for dental applications, those are again more load bearing, they need to also have fracture toughness and again for the sutures, they need to dissolve with time or they, uh, they have to be removed uh, if they, these are non-dissolvable or non-degradable uh, polymers. So, again uh, there can be vascular grafts, uh, there can be stents for uh, basically doing the, uh, the repair of broken uh, venous uh, veins or arteries in a, in a heart. And it can again be for drug delivery for releasing certain drugs uh, at certain required area and it could be again non-adhesive soft, soft membranes to uh, avoid the sticking of two uh, nearby tissues. So, th these are certain applications which are very, very essential for uh, utilizing synthetic biomaterials. So, it becomes very essential to understand these applications to understand what are the parameters which will decide the applicability. So, uh, b these uh, the applications have been there for uh, since last 40, 50 years. So, with their usage, there have been certain failures as well as certain successes. So, the degree of success and failure also decides the longevity of a particular device uh, which is implanted into the body. So, the degree of success and failure will tell us what we can learn from the evaluation of implant history. If the implant has uh, survived, then what was the reason for it? Even if the implant has failed, what was the reason for it? So, we can always improvise on what the devices have been utilized for. Again, there are certain criteria which becomes very, very uh, critical such as blood contact. So, if a device is coming in terms uh, in, in contact with blood, there might be thrombosis or certain inflammation which can uh, release uh, into the nearby adjacent tissues. It can also be drug delivery for the controlled release of certain drugs into certain areas. It can also be utilized as a sensor for diagnostic purposes. In certain situation, situ situations, it becomes essential that we can extract some data or get some diagnostic from a particular uh, blood sample. So, we can also have certain sensors which can uh, exactly sense it can be the glucose level, it can be the drug drug release or it can be uh, any chemical composition of a particular area. So, that is again uh, the required for the sensor application and again extending and improving the current application that again comes from the understanding of the failure or the success of the implant from its implant history. So, that becomes very, very essential. Uh, so, again we need to also extend the, the extend and improve the current applications. So, only once we have learnt enough, then we can apply further for uh, at the same time we should uh, we should be able to uh, improvise on what we have learnt and then develop or extend the applicability of a certain device. So, that is the reason we have we concentrate much on the extending and improving the current application. So, certain applications which were not possible earlier can again be thought of. And again, uh, the, those applicability, uh, again it has not really, uh, it has not gone up to the expectations. The general uh, uh, implant life is approximately 15 to 20 years, but in, in order to sustain that particular implant for a much longer time, we need longer longevity which is four times as that of a current implant materials. So, the longevity or the time period of an implant in the body we are looking as around 80 years. That is approximately four times improvement that is what we require from the current current uh, used implants. So, that so just reiterating that, that the understanding the applications is ba basically based on the degree of success and uh, failure and that we can learn from the history of that particular implant and that particular implant can uh, have certain some sort of a blood contact or tissue contact. It can again be utilized for drug delivery. So, for control uh, controlling the particular aspect of the degradation part, we again require certain engineering. Again for sensing, so sensing also has to be very, very peculiar for a particular place and for what purpose we are uh, utilizing it, it can be for diagnostic purpose. So, we, we should be able to evaluate the chemical composition or ap ap apply certain drugs to a certain area and so on. So, again uh, we should not limit our uh, applications to what we have been uh, we have been utilizing, 
not only for improving the material but also in improving the applicabil applicability. So we, can, we have to extend the limits of current device materials and be able to extend it for certain other applications as well. And also we require longevity of those implants because uh, if an implant is inserted it requires surgery. So for if to remove the surgical uh, complications or to remove that uh, costly surgery which is uh, done again and again uh, maybe a couple of times for a particular uh, patient which has, uh, which has to undergo surgery, it becomes necessary that that surgery time can be reduced or the number of surgeries can also be reduced by extending the lifetime of those implants. So, the, uh, uh, so, uh, so in this we can uh, concentrate on the uh, basically on the cardiovascular devices. So, in the cardiovascular devices we can see that a device if device is implanted it has to interact with the blood as well as with the surrounding tissues. So, it can happen that there can be addition and growth of certain bacteria or infectious agent near the device. So, that basically will hamper the overall applicability of this particular device. Later on there can be formation of thromb thrombi on the device surface that will again limit because that now the surface of the device is now covered with certain uh, fibrous uh, thrombi. So, that can basically limit the overall applicability and further this device can also lead to injury of the cells by basic by its basic functionality of the tissues. Uh, so, that can also hamper the overall applicability of the device. Also it can cause injury to circulating blood cells. So, again that uh, that may also need to be considered while, while a particular device is being implanted and again there can be intimal hyperpla hyperplasia. So, there is excessive growth of cells which can again reduce can result in the reduced flow because if a particular uh, uh, lineage is uh, there then it can have certain hyperplasia. So, excessive growth of cell and that can again reduce the overall flow because of the reduced area which is available for the blood to pass through. So, these are the critical issues with the cardiovascular devices because it uh, retains in contact with, the, with blood and with the surrounding tissues. So, the addition of uh, it can lead to infection by the growth of bacteria or some infectio uh, infectious agent into the device and it can again form the uh, form the thrombi on the device surface that will again limit the overall uh, exposure of this device to the surrounding and again it can cause certain uh, injury to cells or tissues near the device and it can also injure the uh, flowing uh, blood cells or it may also lead to hyperplasia which can reduce the which can result in the reduced flow of a blood stream. So, it becomes very essential to evaluate the blood material interaction because as soon as the particular uh, material or, an, uh, or a foreign material is implanted uh, into the body, there will be there, there is a, an immediate adsorption of proteins or lipid layer on the surface. So, as soon as we have a device it basically gets adsorbed on us on uh, it gets adsorbed by proteins or lipids and it is followed by the addition of the platelets, leukocytes or erythrocytes and later on there can be formation of pseudo intima on the inner surface and that basically leads to the formation of tissue capsule on the outside surface of the device. And once that uh, once this process has taken place it can again change the mechanical or functional properties of device. It can be both beneficial or it, it may, might be deleterious, but this is what is uh, happening in the uh, blood stream after the uh, material has been implanted which is in contact with the blood. So, the, we have the device. So, as soon as we insert the device we see absorption, absorption or absor adsorption of proteins or lipids on the surface of the device material. The, it is followed by the addition of platelets, leukocytes or eth erythrocytes. Uh, so, the basically the blood uh, uh, the blood uh, the blood protein uh, they get basically adsorbed on the surface and the formation of pseudo intima which results in the on the inner surface and that results the formation of tissue capsules. So, if you have a particular device it will it will have first the adsorption of the. So, it will have the first the adsorption of uh, proteins or lipid on, on its surface. It is followed by the addition of platelets. So, we have platelet addition on the surface and then this form, formation of pseudo intima over this that forms a uh, that forms on the in inner layer of the cell uh, or the tissue and then or it is on the outer surface. This is, this is the device and this is nothing but the tissue. So, the inter, in, inter in between layer get basically gets the pseudo intima forms between the uh, on, on the outer surface of the device or on the uh, inner surface of the tissue or the capsule. So, that encapsulates the device and that once the device has been encapsulated it might be beneficial in terms when we require some sort of a cell addition on the surface or it may not be uh, really required it might be del interaction and that basically affects the mechanical or the functional properties of the device. Again there is second application which is uh, cardiopulmonary bypass. Uh, it is also called as the heart lung machine or extra cor extra corporeal circulation so, that is that is basically required because we want to exchange the oxygen when the heart has been disabled. 
So, that basically uh, results from uh, replacing or uh, improving the functionality of the heart. So, in this particular case, uh, the, the cardio pulmonary bypass, it helps in pumping the unoxygenated venous blood. So, we have the venous blood which is full of uh, carbon uh, which does not have uh, enough oxygen. So, that so oxygen has to be reactivated. So, so the oxygen oxygenation of this particular venous blood has to be carried out using certain oxy oxygenator oxygenator and that can be uh, that can be done via certain uh, oxygenator which can be either bubble or membrane type uh, device. So, basically what is happening here is uh, the cardio cardiopulmonary bypass it pumps the unoxygenated venous blood from the right side of the heart through certain oxygenators uh, instead of the lungs because this particular blood has to uh, get oxygenated via lungs, but now this synthetic oxygenator can take care of the oxygen exchange in the venous blood. And this particular development has led to uh, easiness in terms of doing heart surgery because heart has uh, the, the, the blood which is flowing through the heart has to be ox oxygenated, it has to have sufficient oxy oxygen to supply to the uh, to the all the regions of the body. So, instead of uh, getting the oxygen from the lungs, it can uh, it can allow oxygen exchange using this particular synthetic oxygenator. So, this particular device which is cardiopulmonary bypass, uh, this synthetic oxygenator it basically includes gas exchange device which can be bubble type or it can be membrane type. In bubble type, the oxygen uh, oxygen bubbles are basically being released and then later on it, requir it requires deformers. So, because when bubbles are created, it starts forming certain foams. And this membrane type, it is again, it basically filters out and then it releases the oxygen. So, this is much more, more nicer way for the blood to trap the oxygen, but the process is very, very complex uh, and it requires, it is very costly as well. So, in, so these both uh, practices are being adopted, either it can be membrane type or the bubble type to exchange the oxygen flow. And it also has certain blood pumps, heat exchangers, ventricular vents or pericardial suction line for certain uh, operations. It also have tubings, filters and reservoirs for carrying out this particular bypass. So, in this particular case, we can see cardiopulmonary bypass. Uh, it basically is also called heart lung machine because it supplies oxygen instead of letting it letting the uh, letting the oxygen come from the lung. It supplies the oxygen. It is also called as extracorporeal circulation. So, in this particular case, it will pump out the unoxygenated venous blood from the right side of the heart through certain synthetic oxygenator. So, basically, it has uh, enabled the heart surgery and the synthetic oxygenator includes gas exchange device which can be either bubble type or membrane type. In bubble type, the release uh, there is a release of oxygen bubbles which basically go and uh, react with the with the venous blood to exchange oxygen or it can be again membrane type, but the bubble type starts creating certain froth. So, it needs a deformer whereas membrane type is much more softer in operation, but it is very, very complicated as well. It requires much complicated uh, devices to take care of uh, this particular exchange of oxygen uh, and passing of this particular blood and it requires certain other uh, uh, other uh, devices such as blood pumps, heat exchanger, ventricular vent, filters and reservoirs uh, and so on. So, in order to carry out this cardiopulmonary bypass. So, we can see that how complicated this particular process is in terms of uh, utilizing a bypass. Further, there are uh, certain uh, other uh, devices such as heart wall. So, first of all this prosthetic heart valve was first utilized in 1960 in humans, but again it, it basically uh, had certain problems and uh, it basically uh, had certain uh, moving component which are called occluder. Uh, they can be made up of either cage ball or tilting disc. So, in this particular case we have a sort of uh, a cavity and in that we have certain fins or, or, or a tilting disc. So, these are sort of a disc which will basically alter depending on the flow of uh, the blood through through them. So, that is what is basically uh, there and they respond passively, passively to the changes in the pressure of flow and they are made up either of titanium, cobalt, chromium, silicon or paralytic carbon. So, these particular heart walls uh, are, are utilized, these are nothing but the walls which will which will have to turn or tilt, they can be either ball type or tilting disc type to alter the or to direct the, uh, direct the flow of the blood and they can respond very passively to the change in the pressure of flow. Because once the pressure is high or low, they have to alter the overall flow of the blood through the wall. So, wall is nothing but controlling the flow of the uh, blood when the pressure is high or low. So, again they have to respond uh, accordingly to that. So, they have certain either fins or balls which can, and in this particular case they have some sort of a, a disc uh, which can, uh, leaf, leaflets which can uh, alter the 
directionality of the flow. Again, there can be uh, these are again synthetic walls or prosthetic heart walls. There can be either, either bioprosthetic or tissue walls, and this can again uh, be prepared either from homografts or allografts, which are prepared from the human body, or they can be heterografts or xenografts, which are which arrive from the foreign body or prepared from the tissues of another species. Another species. So again, there are two uh, two uh, sides of the heart wall. They can be the synthetic. And it requires uh, some sort of occluder, which which is nothing but a moving component. So we have certain uh, disc available, and then uh, it has a caged ball or some sort of a disc which can allow the directionality of or change in the pressure or flow. And they are made up of titanium, cobalt, chromium, silicon, or pyrolytic carbon. At the same time, they they do not get uh, they they need to control the flow, so they need not really get uh, damaged by the flow of blood itself. And this can again be bioprosthetic or the tissue walls. And these are more natural, so they can again come out either from as uh, from the they can be prepared from the human body, which are called allografts, or they can be prepared from the foreign uh, tissue of another species. Those are called xenografts. Again, these vascular grafts uh, they, they 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 can be either biological or synthetic. So uh, first coming to the venous uh, autografts, uh, auto means the it is from the self uh, self part of the uh, vein, so it it comes from the patient's own. calf vein and uh, again the autologous saphenous vein which comes out from the calf of the uh, uh, calf vein of the patient it uh, it basically performs much more satisfactorily but again uh, it can it can induce certain problems like 30 to 40% uh, people can have face problem uh, in case when there there is no suitable saphenous vein or there can be small uh, or flebit flebitized inflammation can if inflammation is has been occurring Or there is, all, or that particular vein has already been removed. So there can be certain problems which is which are associ associated with the venous autografts. That there is no saphenous vein available inside the body, or that particular vein has already been infected, or it has already been removed by pre some previous surgery. Uh, but they show best result in the uh, reconstructive arterial su surgery, which is below the knee. So they they are well suited for the surgery arterial arterial surgery, which is uh, below the knee. So they 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 have shown very uh, uh, promising results. they also been successfully used for other coronary visceral renal or peripheral arteries uh, both for replacement as well as the bypass surgery but the basic problem uh, comes from the vascular grafts is it can uh, fail by thrombosis which is followed by neo intimal hyperplasia it means there is there is some blood clotting which can be, uh, follow follow by the newly uh, which can form which can form after a new surgery has been done and there is a formation of uh, new cells which basically uh, which which is basically excessive in the normal norm, in, a, in a normal growing tissue so that problem can occur in the vascular graft that there can be excessive formation of uh, cells in an abnormal way in a normally growing tissue so again we can see the vascular grafts they can be biological or synthetic venous autograft they come out from the patient's own calf veins so that is the overall uh, autograft they the body will start uh, reacting to it in a more friendly manner because that uh, particular uh, vein has come from the body itself and they have performed very satisfactorily uh, but the problem comes when that particular vein is not available or it has inflammated or it has already been removed by the surgery and they show very very good results when uh, in the arterial surgery of the knee and they have also been utilized for coronary visceral renal and peripheral arteries but the problem comes when uh, there is occurring of thrombosis which follow which is followed by neo intimal hyperplasia or the excessive formation of cells uh, in a normally growing uh, place after surgery has been taken place they can be other uh, venous homografts so we, uh, again uh, the homografts which are taken from the venous parts uh, and they were discontinued in 1950 because of their high failure rate and it happens because they are antigenic and they sensitize the recipient so that is the reason they uh, were discontinued uh, in 1970s further there can be arterial xenografts so these are taken from the arterial regions Uh, from the foreign body, uh, and they were widely used in 1950s. But again, th the higher rate of thrombosis was observed, and higher rate of rupture was also observed in this particular case. And they were discontinued later on, again in 1970s. And it also was seen that they can also create infection. What happens in the arterial xenografts is they develop inner lining of of host derived uh, fibroblast. So that is the problem that uh, that occurs. Uh, that either it can, it can lead to a higher rate of thrombosis. and it has also seen that the rupture rate was very high and also it it led to the infection later on uh, the problem with them is they develop inner lining of host derived fibroblast but they have seen to perform better in the 
aortic and the iliac positions. So, these arterial xenografts are well suited for aortic and the iliac positions of the heart. There can as well be uh, apart from the autograft there can be synthetic grafts as well. So, we, so for the synthetic grafts they are basically they become a requirement because sometimes uh, in autograft it may not be possible that we have a particular vein available like in aorta which is a very large vessel a very large uh, vessel. So, in that particular case it may not be possible to extract a different aorta size uh, vein from the body uh, aorta size vessel from the body. So, it becomes a requirement that we produce synthetic grafts in certain cases even thinner thinner vein vessels may not be also available. So, in that case also we need to extract or we need to make or synthesize a artificial graft for the body. Again uh, they are required for very large vessels such as aorta even for very smaller ones there uh, they th this performance become unsatisfactory when the uh, when the performance of uh, the homograft or the xenograft becomes uh, unsatisfactory then also we need to uh, make the synthetic grafts or if, the, if there is any uh, unavailability of the suitable autologous vein for either coronary or small artery grafting. So, either when we require very large vessels or we require very small arteries or when the performance of the homo or xenograft itself is unsatisfactory then we need to go for the synthetic grafts. In the synthetic grafts the healing occurs by the formation of fibrous capsule around the graft and then there is a formation of pseudo intima on the luminal or the in inner, inner surface of the cell and then there is a lining of fibrin which gets covered by the fibroblast or micro macrophages and then healing is added by porosity which allows cell in growth and also allows the nurturing of the pseudo intima by the capillary which are present in the pores. So, we can see in the synthetic grafts it becomes a requirement for large vessels such as aorta or even for the small artery grafting that actually occurs when, when there is unavailability of suitable uh, suitable autologous vein or when the performance of the homograft or the xenografts is not up to the mark. So, in that particular cases the synthetic graft becomes a requirement. In the synthetic grafts the healing is uh, healing occurs by the formation of certain fibrous capsule around the graft. So, if we have a graft we have some sort of fibrous capsule around it. So, it encapsulates it then formation of pseudo intima. So, we have a cell surface. So, in the in the in the interfacial region of the graft and that of a cell in the luminal surface of that particular tissue. So, we have tissue and then the pseudo uh, pseudo intima uh, forms on the luminal interface and then we get a lining of fibrin. So, we get a lining of fibrin over it which is now covered with the fibroblast or macrophages and in this particular case if you have certain porosity. So, we have certain porosity which is available then what can happen then it can also lead to the nurturing of the pseudo intima. So, the pseudo intima which is formed on the on the uh, on the surface of this particular device or, or, the, or this uh, synthetic graft it allows nurturing of that pseudo intima and it cannot form uh, natural intima. Uh, so, it it needs to have a pseudo intima over there. So, it can allow the nurturing of the pseudo intima by the capillaries which are present as a in between the pores. So, if you have certain por porous region we can allow the porosities or the uh, porosities can allow capillarity which can allow formation of this capillarity and then that can nurture the pseudo intima. So, we can see the healing is occurring by formation of fibrous capsule around the graft then formation of pseudo intima on the luminal surface then there is some lining of fibrin which gets covered by fibroblast and macrophages and then healing healing is basically being aided by the porosity which allows cell in growth by nurturing through the capillaries. There is another device which is called stent and this stent is allowed uh, is basically nothing but a scaffold to maintain or increase the lumen of a lumen of a vessel. So, if you have a vessel so if you have a particular vessel then we need to the lumen of it. So, the, this is the not, nothing but the internal uh, lumen of the of a vessel the inner lining of the vessel that there is what is the overall diameter of that particular uh, vessel. So, it, it, it has to maintain or increase that particular lumen. So, in, in, in many cases there is some uh, d, uh, some uh, deposition of certain uh, deposition of certain uh, uh, proteins or some sort of a decrease in the overall lumen of a particular vessel then it becomes very hard for the blood to flow through it. So, in that particular case we require strengths to allow the flow of blood which is basically unperturbed. So, in this particular case if the, uh, if the vessel itself is basically constructed. So, we need to send some artificial material which can again lead to the expansion of this particular vessel and allow 
is the blood flow through it. So, it counteracts restenosis by the precutaneous transluminal coronary angioplasty which is called nothing but balloon angioplasty. So, in, in certain cases once we have uh, once we have done a surgery and then basically we see the, the retinal or the lumen of a particular vessel starts decreasing. So, that again reduces the blood flow. So, we need to counteract that by again increasing or ballooning this particular vessel for the smooth blood flow. So, there are certain designs which are based on this uh, which are available for the stents. First thing is spring like design which expands. So, we have some sort of a spring like design which can expand itself once it is going through it. So, initially we can have a compressed uh, spring which upon going inside the overall restraint to it and restraint to it can be released and then basically they grow and again increase the diameter of this particular vessel. So, initially when we have smaller vessel and then the spring goes and start expanding to further increase the overall lumen of a vessel. There can be also thermal memory strengths. So, uh, in this case uh, this material uh, nickel titanium this is called nitinol this is a, sh a shape memory strength. So, it regains its shape once it, expo once it is exposed to the temperature of the blood. So, nitinol is a material which, uh, which is inserted in, into, the, into, the, into the vessel and then it starts to increase its uh, shape thus it will it can allow the pipe or the tubing to enhance in diameter. So, that is that is what is happening once we have this particular strand that we take a particular uh, vessel we insert uh, the strand part into it. So, we have some sort of a tubing and then basically it is inserted into the body and as soon as it experiences the body temperature which is nothing but 37 degree centigrade this ballooning expands. So, this particular ballooning this balloon particular expands and then and then it increases the diameter of the blood vessel. Again this again so these are certain designs which are spring like design thermal memory strength or it can be balloon expandable. So, in balloon expandable we have a particular tubing we insert certain balloons and we have a strength over it and once we start ballooning it once we start filling in the air in that particular balloon we have also have a strength which is lying over the balloon. So, that particular strength also grows in size along with the balloon this is nothing but the balloon cavity which basically starts filling in with air. So, the overall lining around it that is nothing but the tubing or the lumen of a vessel it also starts increasing. So, we can see that balloon expandable strength can also increase the overall diameter of or the lumen of a particular vessel. There can be fourth type which is strength of a biodegradable polymer. So, we can again have certain uh, polymer biodegradable polymer which can be inserted as a strength and then it can also start releasing certain drugs which are required for the along that particular re regime. So, we can have so certain uh, cardio, uh, cardio drugs which are available for, for reducing the thrombosis out there. So, we can see there are certain designs overall there are certain strengths which are required for maintaining or increasing the lumen of a particular vessel and it counteracts the restenosis or the reduced blood flow by percutaneous transluminal coronary angioplasty or which is also called balloon angioplasty. It has certain designs which can be either spring like which can expand, it can be thermal memory strength which can again uh, retain its original shape. So, basically we take it uh, we, we take a strength we compress it and then we insert it into the tubing and uh, upon experiencing the temperature of the blood it again starts regaining its original shape which, is, which was much bigger diameter and in process it increases the lumen of a vessel and it can also be balloon expandable uh, balloon expandable strain. Uh, in that particular case we have a particular balloon which has a strength over it and as soon as we pass the gas or air into that particular balloon it increases in diameter and in process it also increases the diameter of the strength which remains there for a longer time and in the process it has increased the lumen of the vessel and it can also have we, the strength can also be type of a biodegradable polymer in which case we have a uh, we have a poly, uh, degradable polymer which which goes in and it starts dissolving so that the original uh, lumen can be restored and with time that uh, polymer starts dissolving and provides a space for the blood flow and again this biodegradable polymer can also carry certain drugs if required for the cardiovascular surgery 
and there is another uh, another class which is called catheters. Uh, these are nothing but intravascular uh, tubings which are placed either in the arterial or the venous circulation. So, these catheters are the tubings which are re basically required for either administering fluids. So, in certain cases when uh, when a surgery is done, we need to introduce either blood blood products, glucose or medica medication, then these catheters come to our rescue. They are also used for obtaining certain data such as what is the pressure or the blood samples for certain chemical analysis. And uh, so, that is, that is the overall applicability that catheters are intravascular tubings which are either placed uh, either as uh, in the arterial or the venous circulation used for administrating fluids which can be blood products, glucose or even the medication. They can also be utilized for the obtaining the data uh, which can be the pressure or blood samples and but the problem with cath catheters is that it can lead to thrombosis. Uh, again one more re requirement of a catheter is that it requires much more flexibility and also its chemical composition should be suitable so that it should not become an issue later on. And there are certain materials such as polyurethane and silicon which are utilized uh, successfully as catheter materials. So, the, again the catheters these are nothing but uh, tubings which, uh, requ which, which require uh, to either administrator, ad administer fluids or gather some data which can be pressure or blood, but there are certain issues which are which can come as flexibility of the chemical composition of the catheters and uh, that might lead to thrombosis uh, for long term uh, usage. So, again uh, certain materials such as polyurethane or silicone have been utilized as catheters. There is uh, another class of uh, device which is called pacemaker and this is utilized uh, for uh, rectifying the abnormal heart rhythms. Uh, so, what a pacemaker does is it, it generates a pulse which has certain lead connectors, electrodes and certain uh, lead wires. So, basically we have a pulse generator which is hermetically sealed, uh, which is hermetically sealed battery which is enclosed again in a titanium and then electronic module will communicate through external connectors and this external connect lead connectors permit continuous communication between electronics and the pacing lead. So, what has happened there is it can also uh, the lead connectors or the electro tip should also have certain elect uh, steroids which will increase the simulated threshold which is which are there to restrict the uh, simulated threshold because in, in certain cases th that can occur by the cell attachment or the growth on the tip. So, if you have a particular electrode it can uh, have a uh, certain cell attachment or the growth, growth on the tip. So, we need certain steroids to prevent that increase in the threshold. So, that particular part is restricted by in inducing certain steroids on the tip of the electrodes. So, we can see the pacemakers are utilized for rectifying the abnormal heart rhythms. It needs to have a particular heart rhythm uh, to keep the heart beating. So, it, it generates a pulse in a particular frequency which are uh, connected with lead connectors, electrodes and wire and that particular pulse generator is uh, sealed. Uh, it is sealed and which is encased in the titanium alloy. Again the electronic module will communicate through external connector uh, which basically permits continuous communication between the electronics and the pacing lead while providing certain fluidic uh, sealing to it. So, that is what is there and then again there are certain steroids which can be induced on the tip of the electrode to prevent increase in the simulated threshold. If, if, it, goes uh, if it goes beyond that basically there can be excessive uh, beating of this particular heart and it will lead to hyper, hyper uh, increased, uh, increased pressure in the system. Again then one more problem uh, can be uh, eliminated by utilizing total artificial hearts. In this particular case what happens is uh, this total artificial heart replaces the mechanical functions of the heart uh, and this is required when heart fails irreversibly and again when heart transplant is not possible. So, but this total artificial uh, heart can induce some thrombogenic complications lead to infections and failure of other organs, organs such as kidneys or liver. So, in that particular case we require total artificial uh, heart, uh, heart uh, surgery, uh, but again uh, this total artificial heart surgery is very much essential when we do not have a donor which is available right now for a heart transplant. Uh, so, ideally uh, since they cause much more complications, infections and failure of other organs, they are basically utilized for some shorter terms from days to weeks uh, or the, also there is some other device called ventricular assist devices. Those are utilized until the donor becomes available. So, now we are utilizing either TAH or VAH for shorter duration until we have a next uh, donor available to donate a heart and this becomes a requirement when heart has completely failed 
and when the heart transplant is not immediately possible. So, instead of their longevity, these are be being utilized for short duration from days to months or to weeks. Uh, again, then ventricular assist, assist systems, uh, they come in uh, blood contact. So, we have certain uh, in the ventricular assist systems, we have many, many materials which becomes uh, of importance uh, such as uh, for the blood contact. For the blood contact, uh, we have uh, polyether or polyurethane and the blood contact regularly happens either in pumps or flow conduits or valves. So, in that particular case, uh, when the blood contact is occurring, we need to utilize certain materials which can be polyether, polyurethane to assist that total uh, heart uh, replacement. It can again be tissue contact. So, again tissue contact uh, will require certain materials such as titanium which is commercially pure, silicone, epoxy, poly, uh, poly, uh, polypropylene or polyether. Uh, again, these are uh, basically come when we have a belt skin transformer which, which has certain interconnecting leads, certain drive units or even conduits. So, this tissue contact will becomes of prime importance when the device itself is coming in contact with the tissue. So, in that particular case we require materials such as titanium, silicone, epoxy, polyether or polypropylene. Again, there can be certain st uh, spe uh, special uh, structural materials which need to bear the load or need to perform certain functionality. Those can be solenoids for uh, generating the pulse. It can be volume compensator, again belt skin transformer, can be gas filled reservoirs or even batteries. And these materials require uh, materials which can be titanium, vanadium, uh, copper coils for the solenoids, nickel cadmium, even silver or copper for connectors. So, we can see that uh, overall uh, in overall either for total, ha uh, total uh, heart replacement or the ventricular assist system, we require the device to be in contact with the. So, we can see that uh, in uh, either in total heart replacement or the ventricular assist systems, uh, blood contact and tissue contact becomes of prime importance. So, in certain such, in, such as pumps which are flow conduits or even walls. So, there we need to see uh, we need to particular design a particular uh, device so that it can take care of itself uh, and we need to have certain specification for certain materials which can come out to be polyether, polyurethane, silicon epoxy or titanium. Again, there are certain structural uh, materials which can be also required for performing uh, the, uh, the structural uh, or the weight bearing part of it or any other functionality which can come out from the solenoids volume compensator, belt skins, gas filled reservoirs, batteries. So, we, we require certain materials which can be copper coils, nickel cadmium, silver, vanadium, titanium. So, we can see the overall functionality of this particular device depends on the overall uh, functionality of a particular material which can be utilized in certain regime. They can again be blood substitutes. Uh, again, blood uh, substitution depends on the healthy uh, and a willing donor. So, that is very much essential that the donor has to be willing and as well as healthy. But again, the blood transfusion, transfusion can create certain problems uh, which become a mean of transmitting diseases which can be even hepatitis or even AIDS. Uh, blood basically contains certain separable therapeutic co components which can be either erythrocytes, leukocytes, platelets, plasma proteins, albumins, fibrinogen and even other co coagulating factors. So, we can see that uh, blood, uh, blood basically has so many uh, constituents, therapeutic con components which can be separated. But blood substitutes refers to the oxygen carriers, which, which basically utilize for substituting erythrocytes or red blood cells. So, the blood substitute is nothing but uh, it refers to some oxygen carriers which can contain uh, the oxygen and then it can substitute red blood cells. Again, it has the blood substitution has to depend on a particular or willing, uh, willing or a healthy donor, but blood transfusion can create certain problems. Uh, it can transmit diseases such as hepatitis or AIDS. So, apart from so many constituents, we are mainly concerned about the erythrocytes or the red blood cells to take the functionality of the erythrocytes in terms of oxygen scavenging. Again, there are certain materials which is uh, something called per perfluorocarbon which can carry as much uh, oxygen as hemoglobin. Again, uh, they can be alternatively applied by encapsulating erythrocytes uh, so by cross-linking hemoglobin and basically separating it from the stroma. But the problem with encapsulation is that it has a very short survival time when it comes to the circulation and it is immediately consumed by the reticular endothelial system. So, once we cross, once we have the cross link or encapsulated uh, hemoglobin uh, that uh, once after it has been separated from the stroma, it its lifetime in the circulation, it is very, very short because it gets consumed by the reticular endothelial, and endothelial system. So, the overall, pro overall uh, 
uh, basically aim in uh, cross-linking this particular hemoglobin is that it can prolong its survival in the circulation. So, once we have hemoglobin and we cross-link it with certain polymer, then it can prolong its survival in the circulation and that becomes very, very effective once we are treating some acute hemorrhagic shock. So, once there is much more uh, problem in treating a particular hemorrh hemorrhagic uh, shock, then we can supply hemoglobin which is again cross-linked and then it can reduce the damage by cross-linking to the polymer and then releasing it in, into the circulation stream. So, the in certain uh, hemorrhage uh, cases it can be effectively applied once it is cross-linked to a certain polymer because that will prolong its survival or the overall survival time in the circulation. So, that can basically uh, assist in recovery. So, we can see again blood substitutes, uh, perfluorocarbons uh, can uh, carry as much oxygen as hemoglobin. So, they can be effectively utilized. Alternatively, we can encapsulate uh, this uh, hemoglobin or cross link the hemoglobin and uh, then once we have cross linked it, then it can su the survival in the circulation becomes much more prolonged, but encapsulation will make it uh, get consumed very quickly in by the reticu reticulo endothelial uh, system and this becomes very, very essential, the cross linking becomes very essential once we have certain acute hemorrhagic shock. Again, the future directions basically go on to uh, evaluating the long term exposure. So, uh, in this particular case, we can we have to see the long term exposure of devices to bloods or tissue. So, the, because the short term uh, is very, very easy and it can, uh, it can basically pr uh, suppress the overall uh, infections or it takes certain time for the cells to respond to a particular material. So, short term exposures of devices, they are now very much limited and the future direction is phased towards long term exposure of devices to bloods and tissues. So, the device has to perform satisfactorily under the contact of blood or tissue for a prolonged time. So, that is where the future is basically going and again interfacial events, they become of prime importance because as soon as uh, this particular device is uh, inserted into the body, it will uh, it will observe certain protein adsorption, then release of certain uh, harmful bacteria or even infection and again there is some formation of fibrin or fibrinogen or macrophages over the surface. Uh, formation of uh, pseudo intimal, uh, pseudo -intimal uh, tissues or uh, such uh, features. So, that basically can degrade the overall functionality or the mechanical properties of the device. So, it becomes very essential to study the interfacial events which occur after the long term implantation. So, again long term exposure of devices to bloods and tissues and seeing what is happening at the interface between the device and the surrounding tissues after long term implantation. Uh, such as uh, some uh, something has been proposed for the cardiovascular devices that it needs to have an inert at, at implants because we do not want any tissues to grow on it otherwise it will start reducing the uh, lumen of a particular vessel or it will remove the reduce the functionality uh, in terms of either uh, pacemakers which need to be free from any cells or even drug delivery which needs to uh, supply the drug or even sensors because sensors need to be exposed to the blood stream continuously. So, Overall, inert implants can be ex, uh, inert implants has to be utilized for the cardiovascular uh, devices. And again, the overall uh, functionality which is required by the cardiovascular uh, uh, devices is that it should release molecules which are similar to the organ, which is which it is replacing. So, the overall implant has to release molecules which are basically similar, though, so that the overall functionality of the organ can be mimicked by the device. And again, they should become integrated with its biological environment. So, if a particular device has been now inserted into the body, it should perform the as it is natural to the body. So, it should become integrated with the surrounding tissues or the biological environment and also it should provide mechanical or functional properties of the organ. It should sustain the mechanical loads which a particular organ has to sustain, also perform the functionality of a particular organ which is a, which it is replacing. So, th that is where the overall natural uh, uh, future direction is leaving, uh, leading us to it can it is a long term exposure of devices to blood and tissues uh, considering the interfacial events even after long term implantation and the uh, usage of inert in implants so that there is no uh, toxic uh, or any adverse uh, any adverse uh, adverse effect which arises from the surrounding cells or tissues and they should release molecules which are similar to that of a organ which it is replacing it should get integrated with the biological environment and it should also provide mechanical as well as functional replacement for the organ which it basically is going to serve. 
So in summary, we did see that the overall uh, blood material contact is become becomes of prime importance. That as soon as blood is basically comes in contact with the material, it uh, starts depositing, uh, adsorbing uh, proteins on the surface, then releases certain uh, actin, actin agents, which uh, which starts covering, forming the fibrins or the fibrinogen or the macrophages, and then uh, forms a, a pseudo intimal uh, lining uh, over the over the implant. So that uh, that uh, that can be either helpful in certain cases, maybe deleterious in certain cases, and then we also saw that heart walls they can be either of the ball type or the tilt type. Uh, so that can be utilized for uh, assisting the blood flow or, or catering to the pressure changes in the walls. So these walls have to tailor accordingly. Again there can be vascular grafts, so these can be either autografts or the xenografts depending on where it is, the, where the grafts have been taken from. Uh, stents, uh, these are again utilized for uh, improving the lumen of a particular vessel. Uh, they can arise uh, again by ballooning or by spring like those can again be from the shape memory and retinol type or those can again be uh, rising from the biodegradable polymer. So again stents can, they are utilized in terms of restoring the lumen of a particular damaged uh, uh, artery. Uh, they can be again uh, cathet catheters, uh, so catheters for excavating uh, certain data or information or even supplying nutrients to a particular regime. And there can be again pacemakers for uh, restoring the rhythm of, of the heart. Uh, so that in that particular case, we require pacemakers for uh, actuating the rhythm at certain frequency. Uh, there can be again total artificial uh, heart for uh, in, in certain cases when we do not have a donor rightly available uh, or uh, when the total uh, functionality of the heart is being uh, hampered. So for certain duration, for short duration from weeks to months or even from days, we, we have to wait until the donor is ready to uh, uh, donate a heart. So for, for that particular time we need that heart has, the functionality of the heart has to be totally given up to certain machine. And there can again be uh, blood substitutes basically for the erythrocytes or red blood cells when the oxygen scavenging has to be being uh, taken care by uh, certain uh, materials. So, so we did see that uh, we can either encapsulate it or we can apply a material, supply with a material which can uh, store the hemoglobin. Uh, for certain duration, but by storing the hemoglobin or encapsulating it, it gets consumed very quickly in the circulation. So we need to uh, supply certain cross-linking to polymers which will prolong its survival in the bloodstream. So we can see the overall uh, applicability of this particular devices is it becomes of major importance because of uh, it, uh, it, inter it undergoes blood material contact, utilized in heart walls, vascular grafts, even stents, catheters, pacemakers, even for total artificial hearts and blood substitutes. But the overall functionality here is very, very different. In some cases, we require certain cells to form, uh, so certain uh, uh, pseudo, uh, pseudo lining to form, uh, pseudo intimal lining to form over it. In certain cases, we do not require uh, any cells to form on it uh, or the device has to uh, really become a part of that particular functional uh, organ or it has to basically uh, refrain or refrain from attaching it to the blood. So there are certain requirements which basically are very, very different for these applica applications. And that gives, uh, that is uh, basically leading us to understand more in detail uh, that how a device can be up supplied, uh, how, how a device can be applied for restoring a certain functionality and what sort of materials are required for engineering, engineering it. I will close my lecture here. Thank you.